Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. The methamphetamine appears to be coming out of Mexico where there are super labs producing it. Overdoses continue around the area and now we've uncovered where some of the drugs are coming from. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. Another overdose and another death to report tonight. Moorhead police say they were able to save someone, but Fargo police report another overdose death. Police also tell us international connections to Mexican drug cartels are funneling more than just heroin to the Red River Valley. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric looks into the pipeline supplying drugs on our streets. Mexican drug cartels operating in the FM Metro Saying it aloud sounds nuts, but it's anything but. Well, there is information that the cartel is uh, operating in North Dakota. It had been primarily in western North Dakota. West Fargo Police Chief Mike Wrighton says the oil slowdown means it's less profitable for dealers to operate there. And the fat wallets of Fargo Moorhead were ripe for the taking. But Chief Wrighton says the fact that meth, heroin, fentanyl, and other drugs are being shipped nearly 1,400 miles north is frightening. And that's why we've... Uh, committed extra resources to uh, identify those individuals in the community and to arrest them. Remember this major drug bust just two weeks ago? Before Fargo police and federal drug agents busted him, court documents show this man, John Eiton, was supplied by, you guessed it, Mexican cartels. Fargo police tell me the meth, heroin, and fentanyl they've found is coming from south of the border. Federal stats show these cartel operations responsible for 90% of all cocaine coming into the U.S. And these are violent, armed, dangerous groups operating right here at home. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Just last week, Moorhead police and DEA agents busted a dealer's operation on 13th Street North. Working an informant, they found guns, ammunition, meth, pipes, marijuana, and bongs. Now, according to a search warrant we obtained, it's a house where a drug dealer was operating that's linked to a drug overdose in March. Authorities have recovered the sunken boat of a man who was pulled from the Rainy River near Baudette, Minnesota last week. Sonar was used to find the boat and it was then pulled from 24 feet of water. There's still no official cause of death for 52-year-old John Stiglich of Shoreview, Minnesota. He was the CEO and president of Serdan Health Systems and Consulting in St. Paul. The Sheriff's Department says the investigation into his death remains open pending a final autopsy report. The light rain continues to fall, an area that continues to green up. When will this be moving on, Hutch? Tonight, possibly? Well, the grass is now greener on my side of the fence, as well as yours, Mike Morkin. A few greening showers are wrapping up across the valley. Sprinkles uh, mainly on the Minnesota side of the river heading into the evening, but it's pretty hit and miss as this system really starting to wane. However, temperatures warmest today up in northern Minnesota at 63 in Roseau and 48 in Valley City. Temperatures will be nearly steady for most of the evening here in the Fargo area. Light wind at least, and as we look in Grand Forks, we'll be in the mid-50s, falling to the low 50s late. We will stay cloudy, and fog could be a problem as we go through the overnight hours. I'll have details on some warmer and drier weather to close out our work week here in just a couple of moments. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. Mm -hmm. And you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app and get the very latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. A Minnesota man says he'll plead guilty to starting a fire at a Somali restaurant in Grand Forks. 25-year-old Matthew Gust of East Grand Forks is charged with use of a destructive device during a crime of violence and malicious use of an explosive device. He faces a maximum penalty of life in federal prison. Authorities say the December 7th fire at the Juba Coffee House was started by a homemade explosive and caused an estimated $90,000 in damages. Vandals had earlier spray painted what some have described as a Nazi-like symbol on the business, but investigators don't know if that's connected to the fire. A GoFundMe page has been set up for this girl. 15-year-old Stacy Hundeby was fatally struck by a train while walking her dog in Wadena, Minnesota. The account has been set up to raise funds for her funeral costs. If you would like to donate, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. There you'll find a link to the account. The Circle of Friends Humane Society in Grand Forks is back open today following a Parvo scare. 
The executive director tells us the staff is excited to be back after a sick dog prompted a voluntary quarantine. As a precaution, the shelter had to be closed for two weeks. Parvo, which is a similar virus to the stomach flu in humans, is contagious if animals aren't vaccinated. We're learning new details surrounding proposed sweeping budget cuts at the University of North Dakota. In terms of pink slips, the budget may not be as bad as it suggests. Here's one example. The budget calls for cutting 22 positions in the College of Arts and Sciences. It's the largest college on campus with over 20 departments. But officials say it's not likely even one tenured faculty member will lose their job. Some faculty members will take early retirement. Some open positions won't be filled. So do you actually envision that many faculty members are going to get pink slipped? No, absolutely not. I don't think there's any tenured faculty members that will get pink slipped. Tomorrow, between 1 and 3 p.m. at UND's Memorial Union, everyone will have a chance to present their opinion on all this at a public forum. UND Interim President Ed Schaefer will submit his final budget proposal to the state later this month. Now, if you're looking for UND's detailed budget, we have a link to it online. Go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. The Dakotas are home to many of the world's refugees, and resettlement has been a topic of discussion here in the Red River Valley. Now, South Dakota's refugee coordinator says Aberdeen could be a potential resettlement site for refugees. City officials do not decide whether or not refugees can resettle in Aberdeen, but Mayor Mike Leveson says a lot of opportunities can come from allowing them to stay. State Refugee Director Tim Jurgens says prepping a city to become a resettlement site includes community consultations and meeting with congregations and employers to gauge how well a city can host residents who need great assistance, something he believes Aberdeen has the capability to do. Affordable housing, schools, um, medical infrastructure, is it there? Um, Department of Social Services, is there adequate um, e uh, English as second language training opportunities? Jurgen says he wants to be clear that nothing has been decided and they're still discussing this option. The state refugee director says the main goals for refugees when they arrive to new cities are family unification and self-sufficiency. The city of Fargo is reminding people that toilets are not meant to be used as trash cans. A Fargo lift station pump was found covered with debris that was flushed down the toilet. Here's a picture. The city says the pump must be cleaned by hand to prevent pump failure and backups. Employees at the wastewater treatment plant say that when inappropriate items are flushed, backups can happen on your own property or within the broader sanitar sanitary sewer system and lift stations. Items that should not be flushed include baby wipes and diapers, cleaning sponges, disposable toilet brushes, and aquarium gravel or kitty litter. Now to see the full list, head to our website at valleynewslive.com and click on this story. And tonight at 10 on Valley News Live, 10 at 10, we'll have much more on this story and we'll show you items you can flush and the ones you shouldn't. Employees not having a clean place to wash their hands and food not being labeled correctly. Those issues must mean it's Tuesday and time for another restaurant report card. Tonight on Valley News Live, 10 at 10, Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker will focus on two restaurants that share a name but very different health inspection reports. Again, that's tonight on Valley News Live, 10 at 10. Speaking of food, there's a natural attraction for people when it comes to products sold at a farmer's market. Later on Valley News Live at 6, details on where one is set up right now. Beneficial showers are wrapping up across the valley as it was another gray day here in Fargo. Temperatures not very warm in the 50s for most, but it was in the 60s up north. More warmth than the forecast. I'll have the sunny details coming up right after this.